Hey Bulls fans, Larry Bella here with Adam Harry. Hey everybody. And we have a sample game here for you of Burning of Prospero. Uh, this is a little learning game we're doing. This is not actually one of the six missions. It's based on mission one, but it actually has less models because we're just here to show, we want you guys to see the mechanics, to understand how a turn works, and to see the actual game being played. Obviously we don't want to spoil anything for you right, guys. Right, right. So. Yeah, this is this is the first scenario based off that, but we are heavily dropped down the number of models. We we just want to show off how to play. We so. want you guys to have a small enough number of models that they, that you can kind of follow the action and see how all the all the all the mechanics work. Right. Uh, so. Now, first part of the turn. Okay. So first of all, let's go over the board. Yeah. So we have two large tiles. Um, in this particular game, we have uh, uh, you can see these are all of the the uh, the zones. Are, yep. it's, it's pretty easy to tell what the different zones of the board are. This is an obstruction, so these two zones, no one can, can enter them. This is an obstruction, these two zones cannot be entered, and this is an obstruction. And in this game we have, uh, over here, these are the Space Wolves. Uh, so we have uh, Gigor Felhand, uh, three Tactical Marines, and one Sisters of Silence. And then over here, I have, uh, in three different zones, uh, two Tactical Marines, two Tactical Marines, and a Terminator Sergeant. Yeah, one sec that are, yes, one Tactical Marine and a Terminator Sergeant. These are Thousand Suns. And, and like I said, we're, gonna, we're, we're just going to kind of be moving around and fighting. Right. So, um, on to the first turn. You have the initiative. Correct. And we go into the first phase, which is? The enumeration phase. So during this phase, uh, the Thousand Sun player, um, I can use up to three psychic powers and attempt to cast them within the rules for those powers. Um, so the first step in this part of the phase is the trader player selects a coven to cast a psychic power. So who's going to generate the power? This this coven right here, which is composed of two marines. Cool. The trader player then selects the psychic power. So which psychic power would you like to cast? I'm going to use Bioelectric Storm, which is a power that basically shoots out force lightning and burns people up. Cool. The trader player then selects a target zone. So where are you going to be they shooting have to, that? They have to be in line of sight, so we're going to go on Gigor. So really quick about the line of sight. Uh, line of sight consists of a uh, uh, straight lines, basically. Uh, block line of sight. Uh, it only happens if the attackers if the attacker's line of sight is blocked. It passes through any part of an intervening zone, including the border or corner of a zone, in which it is uh, which is either occupied by an enemy model or includes an obstruction. Therefore, you can't draw an angle through here to hit these guys back here or the sisters of silence. This is an obstruction. This is an enemy model. Therefore, his only legal target is geek. And that's who we're going after. Right. Okay, so we're going to use this power, and now we're going to have our our uh, our psychic um, power versus willpower card draw off. Right. So starting with the trader player, players alternate revealing three cards one at a time from their respective decks. So uh, we've got the cards here. Here we go. We're fiddling with, so the player's going to draw. Number first one. one. One or two. Uh, this card is worth one if normal people. Um, are using it, and it's worth two if it's cast by a coven that includes Tartaros, Terminators, or Armin. Those are normal dudes, so that's worth one. All right, so I'm going to reveal my card now. So Your first willpower card. Player just replay, re revealed his card. The this player reveals their card. So I will reveal my card, and I got a one or three. Ooh. Uh, choose this card generates one or three willpower points. If you choose three, the trader player can attempt to cast one additional psychic power during the enumeration phase. I don't care, let's do it. I'm gonna make it a three-pointer just to see if I can okay. kind of weasel my way out of getting hit with his war Well, point. I have no choice because I'm gonna to have to keep on drawing because I need to tie or beat a three. Oh, there's two, so now I'm up to a total of three. Okay, so the thing about the enumeration phase is we, I, uh, uh, we keep alternating, but we can only go up to three cards. Right. So it's kind of a bluffing thing, and you're probably wondering why wouldn't you just draw three cards. Some of the cards in the deck actually end the enumeration phase. Right, and so that, that can be bad for the, the caster. So I don't care. I'm totally down. I'm going to go ahead and draw another card. So one or two this time. This card generates one uh, warp point, willpower point unless uh, any Legio Custodians are on the board, in which case it generates two willpower points. I don't have any Legio Custodians, therefore, boom. So you're now up to it, four it, total. I'm at four. I'm at three. I have to. I, I need to draw another one if push. I want this power to go off. This is the last card I can I, I can do. Oh, it's a two. So I'm up to a total of five, and I'm done. I've got to do it. So one, we are tied. So okay. what happens in the case of a tie? Once all the cards are revealed, the players add up their warp energy and willpower points. If the total warp energy equals or exceeds the total willpower, that psychic power is cast. If the total willpower exceeds the total warp energy, the power is not cast. In this case, 
he equal or beat my five with his five, therefore it goes off. So, boom, the power goes off and we will see what it does. Here we go. Okay, so, bioelectric storm. If the zone is occupied by loyalist models, make an attack roll consisting of one D8. I have my D8. Okay. Thank you, Games Workshop, for awesome D8s. That's right. If any of the zones adjacent to the target zone are also occupied, make an attack roll consisting of one D8 against each of them also. It says per model? Yeah. Okay, oh, so it is per model. Okay, so... And it would be each each zone, too. So. Correct. Right, so it's a big... It hits right. everyone. So we're going to start off with Gigor. So Here's his one. Attacks. Here's his one Attack D8. going to make a, a roll. A one. I'm going to check my armor, which is also a D8. So there's no way I can't beat this. I roll a seven. Okay, so... They no. cancel out. So he didn't do anything. But these guys right. are all struck as well as the... As the as the electricity. Extra D8s, you're going to roll three D8s for the I, attack value? I'm going to roll three D8s for each of those three models that are in there. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, okay. a so five, I a seven, roll and a three D6s, which I can't really do anything about them. Okay. But we're going to match up the highest going down, just like that. And if you, if you go through here, this one, eight is higher than six, so that one, the traders get that one point. The seven is higher than a five, obviously, and five is higher than a four. Here's the interesting thing. Those, all of those hits that are over six, six or more, count as critical hits. It's double damage. Yes. So that's gonna be two, four, five points of damage. Uh, looking at my veteran's uh, stamina, they only have a, a stamina of two. Therefore, uh, I lose two models right off the bat. Boom. Because they both took critical damage. Yep. Doing they two points dead. of damage to kill them, and the one guy who's left has a wound marker on him. He took one. That's correct. So we're going to pull that wound marker out. Uh, what else do you want to cast? So that was a pretty cool power. We're going to put the wound marker on that guy. He was zapped by Dastardly Thousand Sun's energy. And now I'm going to use my second power. Um, um, a coven also can only use a power once. So you can't like say this one coven is going to use all the psychic type of power. So you're going to have to move them around. That's right. You can't, you can't do lightning again and again and right. again. Well, and, th and this squad is now done. They've done a power. They right. can't do more. Um, so I'm going to have um, my Terminator over here. He is going to cast Wings of Fire. Uh, I'm going to cast, it is cast on my own zone. And let's see if it goes off. So I have my, are you ready to go? Yep. This is a teleportation power. So if, okay. if it... If it, if, it, if, it, if it goes off, one model in the target zone can immediately be moved into any unoccupied zone. Okay. So, we're going to... Oh, oh, Reveal one card at a one time. One card. Oh, I have a one. I also have a one. I'll flip that over so you guys can see it. Okay, I'm going to do a second one. Okay. Also a one. Okay, that could be better. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. uh, we're at tied at two. That means I'm going to have to do it. Wow, one through four. This card generates a number of warp energy points equal to the number of models in the Coven starting zone. Ah. Oh, only one guy, so it's a total of three. Bad news is we tied again. We tied again, so the power go goes off. Yep. So let's get these cards off the board. Okay. Get those off. And I am going to cast Wings of Fire. One model in the target zone can immediately be moved into any unoccupied zone. So we're gonna get this guy and he's going to wave his magic wand. Sure. And he is going to go... There's no range on that, correct? There is no range on that. Any unoccupied zone. I want him to go... Right there. Okay, we're going to... Use, this guy is going to attempt to cast Flame Wall. Okay. This is what Flame Wall does. Flame Wall targets an unoccupied zone anywhere within five zones of the casting coven. It does not require line of sight. Cool. Um, models cannot move into a zone that contains the flame wall template. And then you remove the flame wall template at the start of the consolidation zone. So this is basically a power that lets you block block yeah. things. And obviously you can only place it into an unoccupied zone. So this is a cool manu uh, power that's gonna let you kind of control an enemy movement. Okay. So he's gonna do that. Obviously that's a great power for, for him to use because he has a huge giant rock in front of him. <laughs> so he can't see anybody anyway. So, so I'm gonna try that, here we go. All right. Card number one. Oh, Warp Dearth Derp Z oh, Zero. That's right. Will, so. That's right. So we both nerfed at the same time. Well, uh, you also have to check. Where's the target zone going to be at, by the way? Yes. The target zone is going to be right. One, two, three. Yeah, right there. Okay. I want it to be right there. 
Okay, so, okay, so, wah, wah, here we go, number two. Whoa, warp flood. I don't even know what that does. That's a lot of text. Psychic power you're attempting to manifest is automatically cast. Do not turn over any more warp energy or willpower cards. Ooh. After resolving the effects of the current power, the enumeration phase immediately ends. So this is one of those cards that we're talking about where the it ends the phase. So Right, so as an example, if I was, say, on my first power of the enumeration phase, and I thought that maybe there was a chance that that card was in there. You know, that's a that's a yeah. card that you don't want to get your luck. early yeah. in the phase. It's like you're it's going to go off instantly, but then you're done. Right. So I don't actually draw any more. Yeah, cards, you're done. So we're done. And, so, the, and that goes off. Yep. Immediately. So I'm going to get the warp. Squeeze. I'm going to get the uh, the warp fire template, which my handy dandy template is right here, and I'm going to put that sucker right there. Okay. And that is one, two, three. That is four zones away from me. It is not in line of sight. Um, it doesn't have to be, it is in range, and that is an unoccupied zone, and models cannot move into a zone that contains the firewall template. Okay. So, and the enumeration phase is done. So the next part is the movement phase. This is where players roll for initiative and take turns moving their forces. Right. So we're going to roll for initiative, and this is a move all of your guys at once Right. part of the game. Okay. So, uh, go ahead and roll initiative. There we go. I got two. That is me. All right. Okay, so each one of my models, so here's the rules of movement. Um, every model can move into an adjacent uh, zone, and that zone, um, um, you cannot move into a zone that is occupied by enemy, by, by enemy models. And if you move into a zone, and, and once you move into a zone and are then adjacent to enemy models, uh, you're locked unless you have initiative that turn. So as an example, I could move up to enemy models or move away from them, or if I started adjacent, I could move away from them, but because I have the, the initiative this turn, but it, but when it's Adam's turn to go, any of his units that say start the movement phase right next to my guys, they can't move away. Because sure. they're, they're kind of like, whoa, there's dudes in red over there, and they have the initiative. So, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna have th this guy, he's gonna move one zone right here. And you can move up to two zones. Right. So, uh, also, uh, movement is in cardinal directions only. There is no diagonal. Correct. So, but you can be adjacent to somebody in the diagonal. Yeah. So, I'm going to go here. That's one. And then I can do it again. So, is are there any enemy models around me? No. Nope. I'm going to go again. And he's done. Okay. My Tartaro Sergeant. Um, he is going to go... One forward, and hmm. I'll, I'll keep him there. We'll see what happens, and then he's done. And then the this uh, this uh, coven of two marines is going to go one two and one two. And these guys can split up, by the way, but I'm keeping them together for now. Okay, so my movement is done. Okay, my turn to go. Um, I have a couple of options here for movement. Um, I'm just going to move stuff up to get some action going on here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Sisters of Silence. One. Move there, go and, one. And, and now, now we I, are adjacent right, so and you, locked in. Right, so you cannot move anymore because you do not have, have initiative. Correct. So she's she's stuck there. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move... It's going to be Gigor, isn't it? Yeah. Come on. Can't go that Thinking. way. And you can't go that way. Well, I want to do this. One. He's gonna two. back her up. Okay. He's wounded. Yeah, he is wounded. Okay. And so again, what I said earlier about the adjacent corner corner uh, doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go here here. Uh oh. So you are now at max occupancy, as an example. So, well, no, I, I could put one more because these these guys only take up one spot. Oh, okay. I but the the Tardos okay. Terminators take up two. Okay. So, Everybody else only takes up one. So any zone has a maximum occupancy of four models in this game. So yep. and um, and Terminators count count twice. Right. And Custodes count count twice. Right. And everyone so, else counts a single model. That so. was the movement phase. Pretty straightforward there. Mm -hmm. uh, attack phase. Players take turn attacking with their with their combat squads. Mm -hmm. At this point, uh, it's combat time. Big Red's got the initiative. Mm -hmm. So and unlike the movement phase, combat is done 
on an alternating one 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 zone at a time. So as opposed, so you you notice during during the movement phase, all my guys moved, and then all of Adam's guys moved. Now that it's combat phase, one of my squads is going to attack, then one of his is going to attack. So we're going to go back and forth. So I have a pro um, I have a problem here, in that um, don't have not all of my guys actually can attack this turn. So, but I'm going to start off with my Tartaros because he is kind of scary and he is in close combat, and I am going to start attacking. Here we go. He has a Chain Fist, and so he has some special powers. First of all, he has his Chain Fist, which attacks in close combat with a D8. So that is his power, and then... So you're gonna get one attack, right, with the Power Fist? Yes. Okay. Okay, here we go. And I'm gonna get one armor save uh, as well, because it's the the number of armor the number of armor rolls I make is based on the number of attacks I'm taking, not the number of models I have in the unit. Now, the interesting thing about that is, based on the type of models you have in the unit, you can actually upgrade your armor die. So in this case, um, I have Giger the Fell Hand. He's in the unit that's being attacked. He's got an armor value of D8. The sister and the Legion vet has a D6 armor value. So because I have Giger, I can upgrade one die. I only have one die to upgrade, therefore I'm gonna upgrade it and have a D8 roll. Here we go. Eight. One. So, I died, or I, I, I lost the roll. Uh, it is a critical damage roll as well. So it's double damage. It's double damage. So now, the points. thing is, once a model starts taking damage, you have to keep assigning them hits. So, he's dead. And one more point goes flying over. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on I'm actually going to put it on Giger. Oh, that's actually just a one. The reason is uh, he's got four stamina, and at the end of the turn, it's all going to refresh anyway. So now it's my turn. Yep. Here comes the pain. Now I have to roll <laughs> two wounds to that Tartaros Terminator. Uh, what's your Tartaros Terminator's armor, though? His armor is D10. Okay. So that's pretty brutal. Uh, the weapons I have in the squad, though, I have an Executioner Greatsword from the Sister, so that's going to be an actually a D10 die, or excuse me, a D8 die. Okay. And I have Giger, who has a D12 die. <laughs> that's right, he's got a D12. Ow. So and the other thing, too, is after making a combat attack with this model's combat squad, you can immediately make another attack with this model. You can choose to press the attack before you make the second attack. Press the attack lets me move a square and keep attacking. So he's actually going to get two attacks this round. The sister does not have that ability. So if I if I whiff, we'll see what happens. So I've got a D8 and a D12. So here we go. All right, here we go. So you only get yeah you've got your, you've got your attack uh, defense I die. I have my D10 and then my D6. Right, because you only get to upgrade one die. I only have one model. All right, so I got a seven and Ooh. a ten. Not, I'm not. I'm not liking these odds. Not it's liking them. Not looking them. good for that we go. Yeah. Oh. So matching the highest to highest again. <laughs> so <laughs> ten beats a four and a seven beats a two. Both of those attacks also happen to be greater than six. Therefore, they're critical damage, which means four out. points of damage. He has stamp. He has stamina of two. He's he, out. He's done. He's out. So that is that. Now, the bad news is, Gigor has. Well, I, I have the ability to move forward. I think I'm actually gonna do that with Gigor uh, with the press the attack ability. It lets me move forward one and make a second attack. So I could press forward and try to get in combat with those two guys here so I don't get shot. Um, I actually like that odd, <laughs> those odds, so let's go ahead and do it. Okay. Just, just because it'll be thematic. That's push the attack. Get I get one. to make a second attack. You get one. I get one attack now because the sister's not with him. Okay. Uh, and he again is rolling a d12, and you're rolling d6. A, a d6 because these are just normal dudes. So here's my d12. I six. got a six. Oh, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can feel it. Here we go. Come on, Magnus, help me out. One. Not so much. Not so much. So it is a six or better. It's still a critical. Kill One me. whole dude. Poof. All right. So Big Red's up for his attack phase. Okay. So I have these two models, and this guy, uh, because he is adjacent, has to do a close combat attack. This guy um, is not adjacent, which means he can only do a shooting attack. Unfortunately, he can't see because this object, because of the diagonal um, right. line Part of sight, of line and, of this, sight. Is, and right. this is blocked because there's an, an objective here, so he's out. So I have one guy, 
Um, now, these Marines have, um, they are actually assumed to have a bolter and a close combat weapon, so everybody has a chainsword. Correct. So he's going to make his one chainsword attack. It is a single D6. Uh, Giger's got a D8 for armor, so. Here we go. That's a one. I got a seven. So no, seven's greater than one. Nothing. Bounces off. And that is the end. And then this guy cannot do anything, so he's done. So that is the end of the uh, attack phase. That is correct. And now we go to the consolidation phase. So this is where willpower cards, warp energy cards, and wound counters are discarded. So right. So all that we're doing here is we're going to be getting we're going to reshuffle all my casting cards. We're going to put them back in the deck. You're going to get to you're going to get your willpower cards. I also you also pull off any wound counters. So which is the big one? Giger, this is the big one. That's why I gave him the wound. So that goes away. And he's back up to full. Uh, and that's that's how a whole round works. So at this point, we just go back to do the enumeration phase. And, and we're going to we're gonna start all over again. So that's the game in a nutshell. You're going to kind of get to see how it all works. It's um, very, very cool. And we will come back with you with more thoughts on Burning of Prospero. So that was the Burning of Prospero, a really quick gameplay video. We're just back with some initial thoughts real fast. Big Red, what do you, what do you think, man? Uh, it's a Games Workshop game. It's fantastic. The, quality, <laughs> the uh, production quality obviously is just through the roof. Uh, the game itself, it definitely shares the same DNA with oh, yeah. Overkill and Betrayal at Call. It's, yeah. These are these are not sequels to those games, no, it's, no. But, but it's definitely in the rules and the gameplay and how it works. These are definitely games that are strongly related. Absolutely. I think uh, we kind of talked about this, but just getting into the gameplay is super quick and super easy. We're talking what, like read through the rules. If it takes you 15 minutes to read the rules, you're, you're good. Yeah, you're you gonna want to reference until you get comfortable with the rule set, but it's it's really not that complicated, uh, and the rules are laid out in a way that it's super easy to find stuff and, and just keep going. This is also a game that is going to be incredibly easy for Games Workshop to expand upon. Oh, they yeah. could easily, you know, you know, it would be trivial for them uh, through White Dwarf or or, the, or through a supplement. Oh, yeah. Here's here's more missions. Here's rules for the Contemptor. Here's yeah. rules for Cataphracty. They could do all kinds of oh, cool yeah. stuff with it. Oh yeah, very this. very easily to add more stuff. They could even print out. Uh, extra tiles in the white dwarf if um, they wanted to. I really like kind of the me the mechanics of um, of using the cards for the, the psychic yeah. powers. Uh, what they've done in this game is it's this is a game where both players are active all the time, which is what I really like. It's, yeah. it's really fast paced and there's not that like oh it's not my turn I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get a drink in the bathroom. Right, I'm gonna go look drink, at my phone for ten minutes. Dur yeah, no. During both phases, they're very interactive. The way this, the enumeration phase works, where you're yeah. kind of doing the you know the the draw off of cards, it's kind of like playing war. Yeah, it really is. In a lot of ways, you know, it's fun. And um, on the dice point of view, I have to say, thank you, Games Workshop. We haven't seen <laughs> them moving beyond d6s in a really, really long time. You know, the, um, and here we have a game d6s, d8s, d10s, d12s, and yeah. they are using them, and you know, really, really fantastic. So that's the game itself. Um, it's 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 great, easy to learn, highly recommend it. Now let's talk about now let's shift gears and okay. we're gonna talk about the miniatures. Oh yeah, uh, so, that's probably if it's not your favorite part of the game. Uh, I don't. I mean, it it, it will be. We <laughs> have talked to several everyone in the studio. We've been passing these things around. We're looking at them when when we assembled them. The general consensus is that the Mark III Marines. These may be the best. These may be the best modular space marines that Games Workshop has made. They are they are so evocative. They go together really well. They're just incredibly characterful. You get the old style bolters. You get the old style packs. The heads are fantastic. I mean, if you are, if you yes. if you have any interest in Heresy Era Gaming, or even if you don't, you're gonna love this. If you never want to play the Horse Heresy ever in a million years, <laughs> and you have, but you love Iron Hands, or Iron oh, Warriors, yeah, yeah. or Imperial Fists, or you it's want guys look. who just you look- you like the heavy armor look. Yeah, that re really tough, brutal look. You're gonna want these guys in your army, you know? Yeah. So that's just those guys, they're fantastic. Tartaros ter Terminators, here's one right here, they're cool. They're definitely, you know, they have a very clean look. Yeah. They don't look, you know, they're they're kind of the polar opposite of cataphracty. I think I like them better than the cataphracty personally, but that's just, it's all aesthetically. I, I just like the big yeah. open pads and spaces like that. They look really good. And then really, really quickly, we have um, uh, things I thought we would never, ever see in plastic <laughs> ever from Games Workshop. So uh, true. The Adeptus so Custodus. True. These models are gargantuan. These guys yes. dwarf Terminators. They're so big. They're so huge. They're... And and they are just I mean they look fantastic, mind blowingly. We will have much more coverage of the of the of the miniatures, but the custodes are beautiful. The sisters of silence also very very cool, and I mean that's pretty much it. I would yeah. have to say, really really impressed, more impressed than I was by Betrayal at, at Call, to be perfectly honest. 
Yeah, uh, Betrayal at Koth was pretty mind-blowing, uh, just miniature-wise, just the way they were able to pack everything in there. Uh, this one's crazy because of it, it introduces, again, the Sisters of Silence right. and the Custodes. Like that... You're both getting totally mind -blowing. fantastic miniatures and a really good, solid, fun game. Yeah, uh, I can't recommend this one hard enough. Go check it out. Five stars out of five. For sure, for sure. Horse Heresy, Burning of Prospero. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Later. Thank you.